Hello AP Calculus AB students. What we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at the final example from our day two discussion of section 2.2 and we're dealing again with the rates of change and uh, what's going to kind of happen here in example seven is that you're going to begin to see real world examples where we can utilize our newfound ability to take a derivative and find an instantaneous rate of change. This example says that at time t equals zero, a diver jumps from a platform that is 32 feet from the water. The position of the diver is given by this equation here, s of t equaling negative 16 t squared plus 16 t plus 32. s is measured in feet, t is measured in seconds. And we are to address two separate questions, the first of which, A, when does the diver hit the water? Now, all truth be told, part A has really nothing to do with calculus. Uh, it is predominantly an algebra problem, and what becomes very important is that we understand what this equation that they gave us means. So I want to kind of outline some of the, of the components of this equation and get you to be very, very comfortable First of all, we have s of t. You could think of that as just the variable s. Um, the of t just gives it a little bit more detail, saying that I want a certain value of s given a specific value of t. And s, in this particular case, will just stand for the position, the position of the diver. Now, to be a little bit more specific about that, we would be talking about the distance from the diver to the water. So any specific value along this little vertical uh, uh, region here would be constituted as your position s. Uh, if you want to kind of play around with this and see, hey, does this really work? Well, let's find out what is going at, on at time zero. What is s of zero? Well, if we take a look, s of zero, by plugging zero into our position equation, obviously these t components are going to disappear, and s of zero is 32. Well, that makes sense, because isn't our diver, after all, 32 feet off the surface of the water at time zero? He or she hasn't dived yet. So, what we've got going on here is a position function that will tell us the height or distance the diver is from the water at any time for t. Now, the t is pretty clearly going to be a measurement of time in seconds. But I want to kind of show a couple of other very important components to this particular equation. And I think what I would do is start from the back. 32. What does that 32 stand for? Well, Let's say if you look at the scenario one more time and you say, oh, well, I got a 32 in the equation. I have a 32 kind of written in the text of the problem. Position of the diver at time zero, well, that makes sense. The value at the very end of your position equation, the constant, let's say, will stand for the initial position. And that will be without exception. Now, there's a value that you're going to see occasionally in front of the t variable. And while this particular value here in this problem is positive 16, you may run across problems where it has a negative value. You may run across problems where that value is a zero, which means the t wouldn't even be present. And you're going to find out as we continue to discuss that the, the, the value that we're talking about there is always going to stand for the initial velocity. Now once again, there's, there's no information in this problem that leads you to that conclusion, and I understand that. Um, if you want to kind of get a feel for what's truly happening in this particular situation, this diver is actually going to be diving straight up in the air just for, a, for the time being and thus has a positive velocity. Positive meaning the diver would be going upward. In the event that you ever see a negative velocity for one of these story problems, that means that the object that's falling to Earth is being thrown 
or propelled in such a way that it's going straight down initially. Um, if you think about it, in this particular situation, it would be very difficult, in fact, probably impossible for this diver to have an initial velocity that's negative because how can they propel themselves so that they would go straight down, first of all? And this final component that I want to address would be the coefficient of the t squared, which in this case is negative 16. Well, you're going to find out that this negative 16 seems to appear quite often in the problems that we're going to be solving. And if you want somebody to blame on this negative 16, his name would be Isaac Newton. And what I want you to think of uh, for the 16 is just simply the gravitational constant. Now, the gravitational constant is actually negative 32 feet per second per second. But in the uh, context of uh, using this particular position equation, we'll actually take half of that value. And that's a discussion that we're going to have later on. But for right now, I want you to always uh, uh, rest assured that that coefficient, when the problem is always measured in feet, is going to be negative 16. In the case of a problem that uses meters, and that sometimes will happen, that gravitational constant that you'll put out in front of the t squared will be negative 9.8. Okay, for the purpose of our text and the assessments that we use, I won't use anything other than the negative 16 or the negative 9.8. Okay, let's go on to part A of this particular problem. When does the diver hit the water? Well, if, again, you think about the fact that the position, S of T, stands for the height that the diver is from the water, let's let this diver take a dive, and we think, all right, splash, the diver hits the water. Well, hmm, what would be the diver's position when the diver hits the water? How far from the water is the diver when the diver hits the water? Well, hopefully, you come up with the conclusion that that would be a height or a position of zero. And that's exactly what it is. So in this particular problem, all we need to do is to take that position equation, negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 32, and set it equal to zero, and solve for t. Now, there are a variety of ways that you can solve for this t. You could use your TI Inspire calculator, the solve feature. Uh, you could even graph it. Um, I think that the best approach for this particular example would be to solve it analytically, not using the calculator, because uh, this could very easily be an assessment item that could appear on the no calculator part uh, of a test or a quiz. So to factor uh, this uh, properly, I think we'll bring out a negative 16t. I'm sorry, a negative 16 from the very beginning. And that would leave us with uh, t squared minus t minus 2. Continuing to factor, uh, we would find out that this would break apart into uh, t minus 2, t plus 1. Hence, you can see why that this was an easy one to do by hand. The negative 16 constant really isn't going to have much of a bearing on the problem because if you set it equal to zero, there's no solution that's going to come of that. The other two binomials, of course, would give a positive 2 and a negative 1. But since t has uh, to do with time, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use a negative value for time. So we're going to throw him out. So our answer would be at 2 seconds, the diver would hit the water. Once again, not much calculus going on in that particular part. Now in part B, what is the diver's velocity at impact? Now that's a different story as far as calculus is concerned. Just the simple fact that we see this word velocity could indeed indicate that calculus is going to be used. But if you remember from example six, there are two different ways to compute velocity. You can have an average velocity, which is not necessarily a calculus idea. It's just a matter of taking the change in distance and dividing it by a change in time. But when we talk about at impact with this problem, that does denote a specific moment, or as we said before, an instantaneous type of velocity. So if we've got to figure out what the velocity is going to be, well, we would like to have a velocity equation. 
And that's where calculus comes in, and that's where this becomes very powerful. Once again, recall that velocity is defined to be the, the derivative, I should say, of the position. So all you've got to do is find an s prime, which is very easy in this problem. Going up to the initial equation here, the derivative would be negative 32t plus 16, and of course the 32 here at the end would cancel or would become 0. So that would be our velocity equation. Negative 32t plus 16 is equal to our v of t. Now to find out specifically what is the velocity at impact, because after all we could find the velocity at any time we wanted to. We could find the velocity, say, at time zero. Well, I know it's not part of the problem, but maybe this will sort of uh, reinforce something that I mentioned earlier. Let's plug in zero for this t. What do you get? Well, the negative 32 times zero cancels out, and we get 16. Ah, well, didn't we say just a moment ago that the coefficient of the t value, which up here is the plus 16, stands for the initial velocity? Well, lo and behold, if you look at our... Uh, situation here from part B, we got a 16 there as well. And that will always be the case. V of 0 will always be your initial velocity. But as I said before in this particular problem, we are concerned with the velocity at impact. So all we need to do is plug in a time here for the velocity equation. That time would be 2, right? Our answer from part A. And we would get negative 32 times 2 plus 16 which is negative 64 plus 16, which I believe is negative 48. And if we were to place a label on this, which is very, very important. Um, velocity is a, is a measure of, of a distance over a time. And this distance, obviously, is a, is a feet unit. And the time would be a second unit. And thus, we have negative 48 feet per second. Now, if you're a little concerned by the fact, hey, your answer is negative, is that legal? Is that possible? Well, we, we want that, that value to be negative because if this diver is moving in such a way that uh, his or her distance to the water is becoming smaller and smaller, shorter and shorter, then that would denote a negative velocity, a negative rate of change. Um, if in the event this diver was still you know, moving up towards the sky, going up off the platform, uh, we would have a positive velocity. Now that's a little different with uh, what they do in some of the physics classes because typically in the physics classes they would uh, disregard the negative here and just assume that okay objects fall to the ground and, and therefore this is a falling situation. But because uh, calculus is a, is a little bit uh, more picky with the numbers, you know after all it, it is a, a discipline in the world of mathematics, we do look for correct uh, numeric responses and this negative would have a very important um, bearing on the problem. So there you have it, parts A and part B of example 7. You're going to see oh, oh, three or four or five maybe examples um, utilizing uh, oh, falling objects and, and, and so forth in your exercises and it's very important that you, you spend a quite a bit of time with those otherwise um, you can be like a lot of other students have been in the past and you become really confused by position velocity equations.